All right. So we are going to talk about software defined networking, SDN, thing that you have been waiting for. So first we will say what is SDN? What are the different alternative API? And this was the question asked before by somebody, by actually by, you know, somebody basically is that what are the other APIs? We'll talk about those protocols and then um, something else which is required for SDN APIs and OSGI. And then the main thing, which is the open daylight controller. So origins of SDN. So SDN actually started with open flow. OpenFlow guys came up with the idea of SDN. In fact, the person Masado who, who invented OpenFlow also invented SDN word. Nisera form and, and founded Nisera and then now you know sold it for a billion dollar to you know BMW Ambier. So the idea was very it was very natural to them because they said, look, I mean, once we have the open flow, we can program the network any way we want. And so this is software defined networking. Initially, SDN meant that for do, to do SDN, you have to separate the flow and the, con and the control and the data plane. You have to centralize the controller and you have to use the open flow. That was the definition of SDN. But now the definition has changed. That brings us to this cartoon. And everybody knows the story of five blind men and the elephant. Right? People from Asia certainly know it. And um, so um, this is a very popular story. Actually, this is in, 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 in my religion, they say that, you know, you could have many different points of view and all of them could be right. All of them could be wrong also. So it doesn't matter really. You shouldn't be arguing too much. So here's the thing. For some people, SDN is open flow. For some people, it means that you should have something standard in the southbound. For some people, it means centralization of the control pane. For some means, it is separation of control and data planes. However, the problem with all of these beliefs is that these are not really the framework. This is not really telling what you want. It just tells you how you should do it. What is your goal is not given by this. It just says go left, go right, go this way. Where you will reach, that is what we should be telling people. And then people can find their way to reach there. Right? So that's what happened the last two years. First, people didn't know that, okay, well, with open flow, where are we going to get? Can I get there by some other method? And so that is what has changed the definition. People are saying now that SDN is not a mechanism. These are all mechanism, by the way. SDN is a goal. And how is that, how to reach that goal? So if you go today, there's a big debate in the industry about what is SDN. <clears throat> and if you go to one website, it will define it one way. If you go to another website, it will define another way. If you go to the source of everything called Open Networking Forum, ONF, this is the definition you will find. ONF defines SDN as the physical separation of network control plane from the forwarding plane and where a control plane controls several objects and which is directly programmable and abstracting the control from forwarding, centrally managing, programmably configured and open standard-based virtual vendor neutral program. These are the definitions of OSDN. Now, problem with this is, with this definition, is that it includes how. First paragraph is all how. This is all how. And uh, centrally managed is all how. This is all how. This is the doesn't really say what. All right. And so I'm going to tell you what it means, SDN, by defining what. So there are 10 things that you need, people that the industry needs right now. And these are the 10 things. First, the need is virtualization. Doesn't matter how they get it. Whether they get it by open flow or they get it by route flow or they get it by whatever we are going to discuss next. So the first thing they need is virtualization. Now, virtualization doesn't say that you, this is how you do it. It just says that we need to be able to separate the physical from the from what I'm using. So I could have any number of routers, any number of processors, and I could create any number of routers, any number of processors out of them. Right? So we need virtualization badly. We need orchestration. Orchestration means scaling. I should be able to move a wand here and then 100 routers change at the same time. Right? 
programmability. Yeah, we need to be able to program. So, you know, as opposed to, you know, totally, you know, changing the hardware, if we needed to change something previously, we need to bring a box in and connect it and all that. We don't need that anymore. We should be able to do all sitting on my chair. Dynamic scaling should be able to change the size quantity. Again, some of it comes from virtualization, some of it, you know, more than virtualization. Automation is that basically we need to minimize the number of people. So as much as the machine can handle, better it is for us. So troubleshooting, the finding the bugs, reducing the downtime, policy enforcement, provisioning, reprovisioning, everything else should be somehow taken care of by some program and not by human being. And that basically reduces OPEX, operational expenses. Visibility, we should be able to see everything. Okay. Performance, we should be able to optimize the performance, plan the capacity, optimize the capacity, do the load balancing, fast failure handling. So basically, we should be able to do the performance. Multi-tenants, we should be able to share so that every tenant can do their own thing and their own addresses, topology, routing, security. Service integration, they should be able to put their load balancers, firewalls, IDS, wherever they want. To be totally, you know, in one word, it will be fluid. The network will be fluid. You can just move it anywhere you want. Open. And that is another important thing is that people should have full choice of how they want to get it. So everything should be defined by what is called abstraction. What does abstraction mean? Abstraction means, abstract means, you know, you write a paper, you write an abstract. That means that's the summary. That means the essence. That means the general idea of what this is all about. And then people can find out the details, you know, work out the details. So we need to do abstraction. So the abstract is opposite of concrete. Concrete is how. So this, so when people are talking about abstraction, they should not be talking about how. They should be talking about one example of how. Not the only example of how. Right. So, for example, we could say that find the shortest path from A to B and not say that they'll use OSPF. Yes, OSPF can give you shortest path from A to B, but that is how. Right. And so that is the that is the definition of SBN. Based upon this, I wrote this down. This is a long paragraph, but since there are so many what that we need to get, I just couldn't write it shorter. SDN is a framework to allow network administrators to automatically and dynamically, this is important, automatic and dynamic. Dynamic means very fast. Automatic means automatic, right? But it cannot be, it may not be fast. Manage and control, both. A large number of network devices and services. So it includes both devices and services, important. Topology, paths, packet handling, quality of service, using high level languages and APIs. And the management includes provisioning, operating, monitoring, optimizing, and managing. Managing actually is very well defined as FCAPs in a multi-tenant environment. So this is basically, this is trying to put all those 10 requirements into one paragraph, actually two sentences. And so the key is that it has to be dynamic, which means quick. The legacy approaches such as CLI were not quick. So we could program the network before. I mean, you had army of people who were sitting on the terminals, changing the routers, and they were writing command by command by command, but that was not quick. You ask them to change, you know, something, and they will say, okay, it will take one hour. That's not SDI. All right? So legacy approaches such as CLI, command line interface, they're not quick, particularly for large networks. <clears throat> So now, suddenly in the last one year, a number of APIs have appeared. For southbound, we have XMPP and 1PK. For northbound, we have I2RS, I2AX, Alto. For overlay, we have, by the way, um, in this picture, remember, there is this overlay, ton, overlay part, there is a switch part, there is a controller part, there is an application part, northbound, southbound. This is northbound, this is southbound, and there is overlay. All right. So for overlay, we have VXLAN, et cetera, et cetera. Configuration API, NetConf, 
and controller APIs, PCE, and forces. Now, all of these are acronyms that you have not heard of, so I'm going to explain the most important of those. But these have been around or have suddenly come up in a new form. And so the industry is now totally basically in a big transformation where every organization is working on defining SDN in its own way. So IETF. Internet Engineering Task Force is working on many of these words are coming from IETF. Open Networking Forum obviously is working on, you know, many different ways. And so is ITU and so is HC and so is, you know, every other organization that works on standards right now. So SDN is very ill-defined and that is the problem. Right now people are, you know, somebody says this is a pure SDN, this is the correct SDN, that is the wrong SDN. So this is the same elephant story all over, you know, people are fighting. I'm going to just describe some of the important protocols. <laughs> now, normally in a lecture on SDN, nobody will talk about some of these protocols because XMPP, Alto, etc., et these are not traditionally SDN stuff. SDN lecture is goes 100% open flow. The reason I'm talking about these protocols is because I have to talk to you about these. And since you are taking a networking class, you have not heard about these, possibly, because I had not heard about many of these myself. So I thought it is better to just explain all of these and then see how they fit in. XMPP. Actually, it was not designed for SDN. It was designed for messaging and presence. What is messaging and presence? When you do a Skype, you are doing messaging and presence. When you log into Skype, everybody in the world knows that you are online. And then if they are your friend, they can talk to you. Right? Or there are other chat programs which do exactly the same thing, is that when you come online, your presence is told to everybody who needs to know. Right? And then once they know your presence, they can say, oh, I want to talk to you. That is the messaging part. All right? And messaging a presence is also, I mean, basically the, the, when you do, when you do, for example, texting, in texting, you have only one of the two. Which one do you have? Messaging, messaging only. There is no presence. I don't know whether you are on the phone or not. Right? And so there are many things. So basically, XM, X stands for extensible. X stands for XML. So there were many protocols before for messaging and presence, but XML makes it them extensible. Basically, you can write whatever you want to, fields you want to add very easily with XML, right? It is similar to SMTP. What is SMTP? The answer protocol. So that is the mail program. SMTP you use every day, right? SMTP server. So mail, but the mail is not presence. Mail does not tell you presence part. It does the messaging part again, right? But doesn't do the presence part. So XMPP does the presence. Basically, it tells you that the other guy is online and that, you know, you, you get the response right away. So, so otherwise it is similar to the mail, except it is real time mail. And each client has an ID which looks very similar to your, your email. So it could be john at bushtel.edu slash mobile. So it just doesn't end with your email. It also has the device or you know, whatever else you want to name. So for example, your phone. If you're on your phone, it will, you know, that is how you will reach to it. Right? Client sets up a connection with the server. So there is a server, just like the mail, there is a mail server. Everybody, sets up the connection to the server, and as soon as you do that, you have presence. And the server knows who you are friend with. Right? Because you have told them that these are my contacts. You told Skype, you told whatever the chat program. Let me see, what are the chat programs people use? IRC, yeah, yeah IRC, right, 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 right. IRC, what else? Google Talk. Yeah, Google Talk is, is, a, is a chat program. Uh, and, and so, I mean, if you name, um, I'm sure Microsoft has something similar. What does Microsoft use? Skype. Huh? Skype. Oh, they bought Skype, yeah. Uh, so anyway, every company has um, presence software now. So anyway, so the thing is servers, just remember, all, the, all of them are very similar. Basically, you declare your friends. And, um, and then when you come online, the friends know it. Basically, the server tells everybody. So that is the presence part. And the messaging part is when you send it, right away it is sent to the client. See, that's the part, is that it comes right away. The messages are pushed, so as opposed to the mail. Mail, if I don't check for the whole day, I don't get the mail. But in this case, the text comes to my phone anyway. 
whether I check it or not, it is there, right? So it is kind of pushed. So that's the main difference as opposed to being pulled or pulled. XMPP basically came to IETF from another community called Jabber. And so Jabber was being used for chatting and it was so successful, they said, let's make it a standard. And so they came to IETF and so there is an RFC which describes all this. So all the messages are XML encoded. So this is called XMPP because all the messages are XML encoded. Okay. So basically XML encoding makes it very extensible. You could add a new field to the messages, new things to the messages, whatever you want to do, right? The only thing wrong with it is that it is not very good for binary files because everything has to be converted into ASCII. So you have to do some kind of binary to ASCII conversion. And so generally people don't use it for binary file transfer. They use it out of, out of band binary channels for, um, for those things. A number of open source implementations of XMPP are available. So if you wanted to use it, you just look for it and you can download it. Variations of it widely used, for example, in Google, Skype, Facebook, and many games. It is used in IoT. You haven't gotten to IoT, in Internet of Things. So in Internet of Things, basically, and for data center management and so on and so forth, now it is being used. And, um, and I will show you in the next slide how do you use it in the data centers. But basically, the clients respond to your XMPP messages. So the summary is that the chat does not have to be with the people. You could chat with the machine. Machine could tell you that it is online. Machine could tell you that it is offline. You could tell the machine that please, you know, start this, start that. So all of this suddenly came to people that look, XMPP is here. Why do we need any other protocol? We can just use it to talk to machines, chatting with the machines. So Arista switches can be managed by XMPP. Juniper uses XMPP as the southbound protocol for SDN. All right. So let's see how it is done. The data center, everything, everything, whether it is a VM, whether it is a V switch, whether it is a P switch, whether it is a personal uh, physical machine, everything is an object and every object has an XMPP listener in it, module in it, which responds to, which basically connects to the server and says, look, I am on. Tell me what to do if you want to tell it. And, and it tells, it also says, who is my boss? Who is my friend? Who can send messages to me? Who cannot send messages to me? Just like you do on the chat. Okay. And you have a complete management system with complete security, isolation. Everything else that you are looking for is already there. Basically, hypervisor may have some parameters that you can change. Like, you know, for example, one message to the hypervisor would be start a new VM. So protocol is XMPP, by the way. The question is, what kind of protocol? So the protocol for messaging between the devices is XMPP. It is XML. So you could put any fields that you want in XML. Remember how XML works is that you define a schema somewhere, and then the device will follow that schema, and they will understand what this field is. Right. So right now it is a nightmare. So the question is, I mean, one vendor could define. So the thing is, XML could be standardized. So we could have an industry standard schema for hypervisors, for example, and then everybody will use that schema and then it will be all standardized. That step has not been taken yet. <coughs> but that is going to happen very soon because as you see in the next parts of the slides, things are moving very fast.